Hello and welcome back. We are attempting to restore this gorgeous HP 182 oscilloscope from 1972. Part of the HP 180 series of early high-performance, fully transistorized oscilloscopes. In part 1, we struggled to revive the high voltage supply, which had an unfortunate electro-boom moment while we were adjusting it. After much effort, we got our deadly high voltage back. However, the CRT beam spot did not reappear as it should have, only showing up for a brief moment upon turn off. I suspect something is now wrong with the beam blanking control, called the gate circuitry. You know this thing about the beam appearing and disappearing that made me think that uh, maybe I have a problem with the gate, which is a blanking basically. And it's also part of the high voltage circuit and I never checked this. It's three power supplies in one. There is a minus 3200 volts and that's for the grid. That's what controls the intensity of the beam. And that's the minus uh, 31, uh, 3150 volts that controls the uh, cathode. Finally, there is the 18 kV supply, which is a multiplier hanging off the 3.15 kV supply. In the previous episode, we checked that we repaired the mains 3.15 kV, which should have also repaired the 18 kV, but we did not look at the 3200 volt output, which supplies the blanking grid and circuits. I never checked that I have the minus 3200 volt, and that's the one that controls the intensity of the beam, so maybe that is too negative and I never get anything. Oh, I put myself on it. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to see. It's over there somewhere. There's actually an air area that's made for testing just that. And watch over here. And it's at minus 3.13, 3.14. It's more positive I expect it so therefore it should not be a problem with the trace it should not blank it and guess what here's the trace it works only when I have the probe attached to it so let me try that I'll do this remove the probe Turn it on again and it's not there anymore. So it is a blanking issue. So when I zapped it, I zapped something in here, I zapped the blanking stuff. And I bet you that if I were to ground this, I would be fine. I zapped something else in the blanking circuit that was connected to the HV power supply the same way I zapped the control circuitry that was connected to the HV power supply. But I'm pleased that the tube is not dead, the trace is there, it's almost working. Okay, we're, we're back, we're back. So let's wrap up our repair of the high voltage power supply. What do we, did we zap? I think the components that were really dead. It's not that many. Dead for sure. The two input transistors in the control circuit, the JFET and the regular transistor, and a small signal diode. Also, in the high voltage board, there was one bad diode. So I think that's the minimum set of stuff that was bad. Out of caution, I changed the third transistor in the control board because I thought it, it looked a little weak. When it was not starting, I changed two caps, but in retrospect, I think they were good. It had nothing to do. It was just this diode in the high voltage was preventing it from starting. Also during the repair, I tried to change the power transistor, but I put one that's too good. So, <laughs> so yeah, this one doesn't count. And then we blew a few fuses. It's not that many things that were bad. They were, it was just hard to find. So that's that's the minimum set. And I'm not even sure that this guy is half bad. So proceeding logically, I turned the instrument around. This is the gate amplifier, which is controls basically the intensity of the blanking, right? It has to blank the trace while the rewinding. And it also has the intensity circuit in it. And there's also an external blanking control. 
these are the two output transistors so if if you look at it they are a few transistors that amplify the blanking signal and then it goes to a pair push pull pair there's a couple protection diodes so they were actually quite afraid from something coming back and zapping the transistors but i think this has happened i check this one check this one it's okay and then here it's a whole mess i cannot see any diodes or transistor that works we expect a diode voltage zero 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 in the other direction it's zero 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 and from the base to the collector is zero 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 base to emitter zero 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 this is this is not a transistor anymore. Similarly here it's 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 zero 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 but I don't have a junction between the base and the emitter. There is one junction here that has survived. Well maybe. <laughs> so we have zero transistors and maybe uh, half a transistor here. So let's see what those transistors are. Okay, after looking up the transistor in the microfish. The PNP is a 160 volt 1 watt transistor. It's an 1853 0038 if you want to know everything. Not super extra performant, 100 megahertz, 40 gain. I lucked out, I happen to have it. It's not that they are that special, but it's hard to get them in the right can, the old can. And then the NPN is an 1854 Again, no equivalent. It's 120 volts, one watt, uh, 500 milliamp max. Similar speed, it's silicon, so it's a little bit faster, 150 megahertz. Uh, similarly, an impressive gain. So I, I pulled up a few possible equivalents to N5551. It's 120 volts, 500 milliamps, so exact same spec. Similar weakling gain at similar current, it's, it's faster also at uh, the same current and it's the same form factor so i think i have two good form factors that i can replace the transistor with all right and so now we can test the diode that's across it nope good that way good diode okay so it must be just a transistor and that's the PNP, that's the 853. Do we have one with leads long enough? We do. Uh, you know, I'm going to mount the two transistors on it and then solder it because this is just too difficult. And this guy. Alright. So we get our NPN. This special one. Hopla. Okay. Let me check the diode. Okay. So the diode didn't die. So the protection diodes didn't protect the transistors that much. Okay. We will remount that and see if that's the only thing that we blew. Actually, I might. Let me check the uh, transistor just before and just after, just to be sure. And it's good I checked because it appears that the transistor that drives those two also took the brunt. So of course, if this one became a, a complete short, this one was excited by the event. Fortunately, I have it. It's it. 2N2369. All right. Any diodes around that thing? Yeah, there are a few. Better check that. It's a diode. It's a diode. It's a diode. It's three diodes. And this one. Ooh. Okay, this one, it didn't like it. I think this one, unless it's a germanium diode and it's supposed to be that way. What's up with that guy? So that one is uh, unhappy. Let me check what kind of animal that is. Uh oh, we might have hit a snag. That's the hell of a special diode. 
1901.0535 hybrid hot carrier. What the heck is that guy? All right, no panic. It's an uh, it's an old name for Schottky diode. I found the diode. Um, it is a Schottky small signal. Actually, it took me a while to find because it wasn't the fish of the usual diodes. It was in the fish for microwave diodes. So 15 volts, 1.2 picofarads. I have no idea what they would use such a fast diode over here. Makes no sense to me. Uh, but anyhow, in, in the microwave department made by HPF2, this one is only, I tested it, is only 10 volt uh, voltage and this one is more than 15. So I, I think I'll take, I'll take this guy. And they both have 0.3 volt uh, voltage forward, which I think what is what the, the main thing that they were used for. Odd thing to find a microwave diode on here. But once again, I don't think it's used for its microwave properties. It's used as protection. And protecting, it didn't do so much. Okay, which makes me think if the damage propagated all the way here. Okay, let's check Q5. So I did check Q5 is here and at least on the, on the multimeter it looks okay. So I think we're going to do a try like this and see if we repaired enough of it. All right, and I think the main test here is going to see if we see a trace and then if we can do the intensity. Intensity is done through gate control. No joy. Oh, yeah, 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 some joy. Yeah, joy. All right. Woo. Okay, we were... We recovered from our incident. Oh, do we have intensity control? We do. Okay, so we repaired the um, the gate control. Yeah. Oh, I can see the 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 trace adjust is not right. It's not aligned properly. There we go. Make you flat. Okay. All right, finally, we have the thing with all the voltages adjusted and we've found our way out of the hole we put ourselves in by repairing the uh, damage we had done trying to adjust the high voltage supply. Oh joy. So in the end, repair in the gate amplifier caused by our problem in the high voltage uh, supply, two pi transistor, one driver transistor, and one shot key diode. Four components. I'm fixing another major annoyance here is that the tube is actually not held in place in the front but had foam all around, which of course became a whole mess. I was wondering where I was getting foam dust all over the place, but it's whatever was around here. I'm going to have to replace it with some rubber or something. Uh, I find this piece of phone works perfect, put it back there. Uh, you can actually push the tube slightly forward and then I, I pushed it backward. Clean it a little bit and then put the pieces. There's this guy and then there is this front thing and then the spring had detached so I, I'll be able to fix that too. And then she came with that blue screen which I'm not 100% sure if it belongs or not. I'm going to try now that I have this dismounted. But it was extremely scratched up, so a little bit of plastic polish. Okay, much better. Much, much tremendously better. Doesn't make any sense. Here. Yeah. 
Okay. And now, yeah, we have the little LED. Well, it was a bulb I replaced it with an LED. Okay, yeah. Looks okay, I don't have any drawers, so I can't see anything at the moment. But drawers is what we do next. All right. So after replacing all these bunches of components, we finally get to where we want it to be, which is repairing this. There must be a line setting, line, nothing. So the trigger not working, uh, which is going to be amusing because the trigger on that one is particularly tricky with the infamous tunnel diode system. All right, we finally fixed our oscilloscope mainframe after a high voltage power supply disaster. And if you thought that was tough, you haven't seen nothing yet. Wait until we deal with the 1966 vintage dual time base and triggering plugin with a million transistors. Entertainment and more HP circuit wizardry guaranteed as we push on to get the scope back to perfection. See you in the next episode.